great afternoon continuing forward. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So I'm going to read you a little bit of some other things I found uh, in doing some research. Um, so let me come up with this one here real quick. The American Center for Law and Justice. Okay, that's a politically conservative, Christian-based social activism watchdog for corruption uh, organizations in the United States. It's headquartered in Washington, D.C. and associated with Regent University School of Law in Virginia Beach. Okay, the ACLJ was founded in 1990 by law school graduate an evangelical minister, yes, the evangelicals, aren't they just special? Pat Robertson, okay. Now, Pat Robertson, um, my God, he's, he's just, he's out there. Uh, I knew somebody that was a gospel singer and she sang on the Pat Robertson show. Uh, and she said, behind the scenes, he is one of the nastiest men you'd ever meet. Just absolutely horrendous. But he sets himself up as this paragon of virtue, you know. So bad. Okay. So let's continue forward with this. And again, this is called American Center for law and justice. Sounds like a good thing, doesn't it? Yeah, well, anything but. So you may want to check some of these out. Uh, it says the ACLJ generally pursues constitutional issues and conservative Christian ideals in the courts of law. The leaders of the ACLJ also occasionally engage in public debates to present their perspective on legal and constitutional issues. Okay. ACLJ arose in part as a right-leaning political answer to the American Civil Liberties Union. The name and acronym ACLJ was chosen to contrast with the ACLU. You have the ACLU. Well, we're the dark side, okay? Here's the positive, the ACLU. Well, we're going to come out with the dark side of the ACLJ and promote ours as being the Christian value, okay? Oh, my Lord. Well, it says also it's attracted much media attention for its lawsuits, such as its campaign to oppose changes to the Constitution of Kenya that, according to the group, would permit abortion and Islamic law, and its attempts to block the construction of an Islamic cultural center near the former site of the World Trade Center. The ACLJ supported blocking the construction of the center through New York City's Landmarks Preservation Commission. Though the ACLJ in the past has opposed efforts to block churches in the same way, in November 2010, the ACLJ asked that the U.S. Justice Department investigate the Congressional Muslim Staffer Association's weekly prayer session on Capitol Hill. Can you imagine? If you're Muslim, you're not allowed to, to have your prayers, okay? Not allowed. How dare they, you know? They were alleging that the organization demonstrated a pattern of inviting Islamic extremists with ties to terrorism to participate in these events. In 2018, ACLJ attorney, and get the name of this, Jay Sekulow, was serving on President Donald Trump's legal team. He's still on there, okay? 
Another Sekolo client at the time was the American Christian pastor, Andrew Brunson, that's in detention and facing charges in Turkey. Okay. Says the chief counsel of the American Center for Law and Justice is J. Allen Sekolo, an attorney and a Christian adherent of Messianic Judaism. And so it says the following are some of the cases Sekolo and this center have argued before the Supreme Court. Okay, and it's got a whole list of, if you want to go through the list of the notable legal cases they have been involved in, I'm going to put the uh, URL in here so you can look that up yourselves. I'm not going to read all those cases. Um, in Europe, 1997, J. Sekolo and Thomas Patrick Monahan, chief counsel and senior counsel of the ACLJ, respectively set up the European Center for Law and Justice in Strasbourg as part of the ACLJ's international strategy. Sekolo serves as, let me see, let's move this over so I can read it, as chief counsel for the ACLJ. The following year, the ACLJ set up the Slavic Center for Law and Justice in Moscow. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? They have, oh, but we know nothing, I know nothing. Nobody that I know has anything to do with Russia. Nobody. Just my attorney, okay, <laughs> has dealings in Moscow, but we know nothing about, I don't, I'm, not us, no, nobody, no. <laughs> so let me say that again. ACLJ set up the Slavic Center for Law and Justice in Moscow. Sounds like Russia to me, but what do I know? I didn't go to Yale. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Both organizations on the European mainland have full-time staff of religious rights attorneys. The ACLJ is active in the United Nations Organization and in the Council of Europe and represents the interests of certain Christians, certain Christians, I like that, certain Christians, <laughs> not the Christians I know, but certain Christians, the joy of the evangelical community, Bible, commentary by 666, okay, they are the certain Christians in the Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg, okay, in Africa, the ACLJ is one of the several American Christian groups that are promoting conservative Christian laws in Africa, supporting controversial movements regarding LGBT rights, including support in Uganda for criminalizing homosexuality. Criminalizing it, okay? Are you getting this? This is what they're promoting in Africa. And if they got their way and they get all of these judges in the courts here, if they had their way, they would criminalize it here as well. Okay, let's go forward. ACLJ has been criticized by the ACLU for its stance on putting prayer in public school and by Americans United for confounding support of separation of church and state with being anti-religious. The human rights campaign is critical of the ACLJ's finances, citing that the organization does not meet 10 out of 20 of the Better Business Bureau standards for charity accountability. And the ACLJ ob obfuscates Obfuscates, I can't say that word today, obfuscates how much Sekolo earns from the organization. So they're not anteing that up. Um, but you can look this up in the wikipedia.org under Center for Law and Justice. Okay, so now continuing forward. 
oops, I hope I didn't just uh, get rid of what I was uploading. Okay, next we go on to, waiting for it to open. Eep. Well, it seems like this one does not like to open. Okay, so I'll go to the next one while I'm waiting for this. It has to do with Breitbart. Okay, going on to Wikipedia. This is Breitbart News. It solicited ideas for stories from and worked to advance and market ideas of neo-Nazi and white supremacist groups and individuals. Breitbart News is a headquartered in Los Angeles with bureaus in Texas, London, and Jerusalem. Co-founder Larry Saloy is the co-founder, the co-owner, along with Andrew Breitbart's widow, Susie Breitbart, and the Mercer family, the lovely Mercer family. Aren't they just gems? They are involved in this, uh, the judicial things, this Breitbart, white supremacist, all the way, nationalists. These are the people they support, okay? So let's continue forward. So now we know the Mercer family is involved in Breitbart as well as neo-Nazi endeavors. Okay, Mercer family, the CEO, while Alex Marlowe is the editor-in-chief, Winton Hall is managing editor, and Joel Poliak and Peter Schweitzer are senior editors at large. It says, it has been our motto since the days of Andrew Breitbart that we use it whenever we go to war against our three main targets, which are in order, Hollywood, and the mainstream media, number one, the Democratic Party, and the institutional left, number two, Republican establishment in Washington, number three, okay? So they're after Hollywood. Why is it they're after Hollywood? Because so many of them are Jewish at the head, okay? So they're after Hollywood, they're after the left, the Democratic Party, trying to undermine it, and then the Republican establishment undermine it. They want, though, they don't want genuine Republicans. They want ones like Trump. They want the ultra conservative, the white nationalists, you know, the ones like the, the judges, like they're trying to put in of Kavanaugh. That's what they are supporting. Okay, so let's go forward with this. Breitbart News has published a number of falsehoods and conspiracy theories. Oh, what a surprise, huh? As well as intentionally misleading stories, including claims that Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration supported ISIS. Yes, due to Breitbart and those gems, the Mercers, okay? It has sometimes published these misleading stories as part of an intentional strategy to manipulate media narratives via disinformation. Okay. So not only that, but we have, uh, you know, the one that was in the White House from Breitbart, Breitbart, who has put out a lot of movies, okay? Did you know he was making a lot of movies? I kid you not, have to look him up and, and see what all is going on in his world. But again, he's making movies that are supporting like the women in America and all those really ultra conser conservative, and that's not conservative. I mean, well, let's just say what it is. This ultra out, in the ozones, white supremacist, anti, you know, they don't like globalization. They want to be nationalistic. 
They don't want any people of homosexual persuasion. They don't want immigrants. They don't want, you know, they don't want uh, women's rights. So when you really look at what they're into, it is really horrendous and heinous, okay? So uh, let's see, see if that other one has opened yet. No, that is not, I don't know why this is, oh, there it is. Okay, the Racial Nationalist Party of America, okay? Racial Nationalist Party of America. You need to look this up for yourself and just go through this because they have a huge manifesto, which sounds like Mein Kampf, okay? So they, they, love, the, they love Putin. They love Russia. Okay, and they have a thing when you open this up, Ukraine model, Russia wants war. Ukraine offers us a microcosm of exactly what the globalists are trying to accomplish in the United States. Okay, so anyway, I'll let you go through this uh, about uh, what they're saying. Um, but it's all about white nationalism. It's, uh, you know, they don't like globalization. Everything needs to be self-contained. We wanna pull away from everybody else. We don't wanna have anything to do with, you know, it's, it's all that nonsense. So I'm gonna let you look that up yourself. I'll put the URL in there for this one as well. But, I mean, when you really start looking into these things, they're so interwoven and interconnected, okay, that it's just over-the-top craziness going on now. And really, we need to get a handle on this, okay? You have the ones like, uh, you know, and I don't know why his name is just totally escaping me, um, that was in the White House that was working for Breitbart. He's an anarchist. He wants to do away with government. He wants to do, he wants to tear it all down. He's even more radical, okay? Even more radical. So again, um, and this guy is really snaky. Um, and you look at ones like Manafort. They had the big thing on Manafort the other night, just how He's gotten these people into office in all these various countries and just the, the things that this man has done that are so underhanded and so, you know, very smart in a criminal way, although it caught up with him eventually, okay? So I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna look up, see if I can find the other URL to the Federalist donors list and the other thing I had on the Federalists the other day and put all these URLs in the description so you can go ahead and check them out for yourself. But again, this one site, it's just got so much stuff on here um, on the Racial Nationalist Party of America. Uh, I'll just read some of the, the uh, things it's got. Um, RNPA membership application, party handbook, introduction, uh, race, you can't handle the truth, earth changes, um, racial nationalist viewpoint, abolish the Federal Reserve. Oh, yes, they don't want anything to do if you... <laughs> They say, if you are going to join our site, you have to send in dues and you cannot send a check because we have nothing to do with the Jewish money <laughs> banking system. So, yeah, no, they're really radical. Uh, Hillary Clinton, how she lost. John McCain, the truth about whatever. Bill Clinton, liberal icon. I mean, you know... FBI war against freedom. 
uh, anti-Martin Luther King demonstration revisited. I mean, it's just got so much crap on here. You, you just... And like I said, their uh, membership thing, when they get into their full explanation, again, it's like reading Mein Kampf, okay? Um, so I'm going to leave this here for now. Really, we have a lot of work to do. People stand up, and we need to look into these ones. Like, like I said, Women for America sounds good, doesn't it? It's not. For these all of these things that they're trying to bring in. And it's so heinous because they're bringing all these things into the Christian colleges. They're trying to infiltrate all the law systems. As you can see, they even have a thing in Moscow now. But oh, we have nothing to do with Russia. And on the other hand, what's wrong with Russia? It's wonderful. They just did uh, some interviews with some of these Christian rights is a gun show. What we, we, we love Russia. There's nothing wrong with Russia. What are you talking about? Okay. So, I mean, the ideas that they've got playing out there have really taken some hold in that uber conservative faction that's in the U.S. across the board from the nationalists, conservative Christian evangelicals. Bible by SS 666, Bible commentary. <laughs> I can't believe how they've taken things out of context and spun them into something totally erroneous. But then again, that's what the dark forces do. They take something that sounds genuine and they start spinning it and skewing it until you're so far away from the light that you don't recognize you're in darkness anymore, okay? And you confuse the light, the darkness with the light. Okay. Well, it talks about all of that. I don't know how many of you are um, Christian uh, enclave and uh, read the Bible. But the Bible talks about, you know, them coming in. 666, the Antichrist, looking like it's something good. But it's coming in in a mask, and behind that mask is really dark. Well, I think the evangelical community. I don't think it's a single person that is that 666. I think that this really has to do with this mindset that's coming in, uh, with this type of mindset where they're teaching, again, uh, you know, things like prosperity, and all these things, things that are not in the Bible that they've taken out and skewed. And because of that, they've gone into this whole ego type thing. They take little sections out and spin it into something else. And again, that's how the demonic works. It takes something out of context, starts putting in doubt. It starts putting in doubt, driving fear, fear and doubt to start skewing the narrative, okay? Rather than depending on truth and God and the, the correct way of moral integrity, transparency, it's like I said, you have to walk in, in integrity, transparency, sacredness, honesty. Well, they're ready to throw all of that out the door and turn a blind eye to those things if they get the things they want in, okay? So we're, we're willing to put Satan on the throne if we can get no abortion, okay? We're, 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 what's the difference, okay? <laughs> really, it's getting to that degree of just insanity, you know, uh, when all they see is money, and they're following mammon, what the, God call, what the Bible calls mammon. They're following mammon, okay, to the exclusion of all else. It's about money, 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 prosperity. We're teaching the prosperity doctrine. Following money. What does the Bible say? It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get into heaven. Well, look at ones like Mercer's. Look at these types that are, that are, you know, 
coming in and supporting these uber Christian narratives. Okay. The writing should be on the wall. Okay. And it's the worst thing is they use the Bible. <clears throat> they use the Bible, but really they turn it upside down. They really turned it upside down, inside out, skewed it to the nth degree to where it doesn't resemble anything that is going in the correct direction. So I'm going to leave this here for now. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I hope you're having a great afternoon. But again, don't be afraid, but we need to be vigilant. We need to stand up. We need to get the genuine Christians out there to stand up, you know, and remove themselves from these false institutions of the Bible by commentary by 666. They need to come out of that. And, you know, because, again, what's it say? It says that they will have a, um, and this is like in Revelations too, it talks about they will have a persona seeming of godliness. And these good Christians love to wear their little cross and this and that and sit there, but their heart is as black as black can be. Okay? They're not coming from love. They're not coming, they're coming from judgment, from hatred from, you know, repression, okay? So, again, we need to be vigilant and go forward. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great day. I will see you online. Aho!